Hello and welcome to Monkey's Paper Flues at Craft Corner. Today I am going to show you in part one of our two part series on embossing resist techniques with embossing powder. There are many ways to do resist. The most common, of course, is with embossing powder. So you can do this with any embossing powder. It does not have to be clear, white, or any kind of color, long as it's a glossy and not opaque. You can use any dye based ink or pigment hybrid ink, even markers. Now, depending on how you want to do it, what you want to do with it, these markers could be good. You could even use the Arteza brush markers, and you can do a sort of watercolor technique with them. So, even the distressed inks here. The whole thing is, is whatever you print on your card stock here will the ink will resist the embossing and that's why i say get a glossy one do do not do matte do not do an opaque kind of textured one it will not work it will seep into it so i would definitely go for a glossy or semi-glossy embossing powder just so that you get that resist the best way to do resist is with a background stamp so you can do it with your figures if you wanted to. You could do it with words. And I'm going to mostly be using this Bold Flowers by Friskers for these panels and cards today. Now I'm going to show you multiple ways how to do it with embossing powder. Now the first way is of course the most basic way. And that is, wow oh, this is bigger than the card stock. So let's do a little technique here without the magnets since we're going to be doing this. This is the same thing I do with stencils a lot. I'll put some tape behind it and use that to position it since I do not want those magnets in my way. All right, so we're going to put that background stamp on my We Are Memory Keepers Precision Press Advanced, and we are going to use our embossing fluid and just we are going to just emboss this design right on this panel. And I'm not too concerned if it goes over a little bit because the embossing ink will dry and it's clear, so it will not affect my pad in any way, shape, or form. If you do feel a little nervous about having it on your stamping platform, you can always put a clear sheet on it or take off the foam pad and do it directly on the base itself. So we are going to use the clear embossing powder from Red Collections. You can do this technique with any of the clear embossing powders. I just have this one in my collection. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the white paper that is underneath this as our resist. You're going to take a, quite a long time heat embossing this. So I'm going to take that off because it does take quite a while to get such a big piece embossed. Now you can use any color ink you want to use, any type of ink you want to use. I'm going to show first in distressed inks and blend it on top of the image that we just embossed. So I'm going to start lightest to darkest and you're going to see as I go through this that the image will pop through. The color will go onto the paper, but it will be resisted. Embossing will resist it and it will make this beautiful image. And what's nice is yes, at first you'll see the color on the embossed image. When you're done, you can always wipe it off and you will get a beautiful crisp color behind it. So I'm going with warm lipstick, spice marmalade, I think it is fossilized amber to do this panel. You can, of course, do any color combo you want. It's more about what you get as a result than the, the color combo. As you see, there's a very pretty panel and you can see the image pops right out. And I would just take a soft cloth and you can just go over it. You can use baby wipes. The only thing I will say is if you're using a water, water-based ink, it may get water spots so definitely better sometimes just to use a dry soft cloth all right so now for the next technique we are going to first 
ink blend our background first and then deal with the fun embossing later. So I am using the same colors as I did in the first panel. And what's fun about this technique is you can go entirely dark on your last color and it will show through. And you will have this beautiful, almost antique kind of shabby chic vintage look. Almost a little steampunk sometimes too. Depending on what kind of stamp you use, you can make it really retro and steampunk. It's a fun technique and a great way to make interesting backgrounds for your cards. Or scrapbook pages or any kind of project you are working on. So we are just coming in here and I'm going to try to make sure I'm blended all the way. Oops, I wrinkled that paper a little bit, but it'll be fine. The fun technique comes next. So first, you're going to make sure you totally heat set your panel. And of course, you're going to want to take your anti-static tool and super anti-static this just in case there's any ink particles that could still be a little bit wet because you don't want your embossing powder to stick to the panel itself. So very important to make sure your panel is dry and also anti-static so that you don't have any of that. All right, so we're gonna put that down and I'm just gonna kind of caress the stamp down. I like to caress background stamps and press my corners in and not like do the compressions as much because you do get a nicer layout of it. Now for this technique also, I would recommend the clear because you want the color underneath to show even though you are doing a colorful background. Then we are going to heat set this once again. And what's nice about this is you get a beautiful gloss when it's done. And you can see, I mean, you could even leave your panel like this if you wanted to and just have that gloss in the background. But what I'm going to show you is taking a darker color and going right over your color. And the reason why, you can even do this with a marker if you wanted to, if you didn't have, let's just say, any distressed oxides or even a distressed, dark distressed ink, black, navy, browns, whatever color is darker than the colors you're using, you could use it. You can use a dark purple, whatever color. And what it's going to do is it's going to cover all the color in the background, but where you did the embossing on top. And that will pull it forward so that you still see that color, even though you're covering up the color in the background. So it is a very fun way to make a very vintage -y kind of steampunk design, depending on what you're using and what you're planning to make in there. You could use a background with gears in it and make it look very industrial. It's really fun to make it more darker tones and make it more of a masculine card. But you see that beautiful damask kind of look and as I wipe it down you're going to see the colors brighten because the ink is just sitting on top of your embossed area so when you go over it with a soft cloth you're wiping it off so it is showing you the pure color. That is also why I recommend doing a glossy or semi-gloss versus a matte or textured because the ink will sit on those it won't sit on these so it makes it really easy to do your effect with it so definitely a glossy or semi-gloss. I wouldn't do a matte or like I said, the texture, because it will sit on top of the texture versus wiping it off and getting a more crisp look. And look at that pretty shine on both of them. Now we've done it that way. Now you're saying, well, can you only do it with clear? No. You can do a resist technique with any color ink. And I mean any color, because honestly, it does not matter what color the embossing powder is. It just matters that it's resisting the ink. So I am pulling out my Hero Arts gold embossing powder. And I'm just going to put that on there. And of course, you can see this design right away and see where, where it took and where it didn't take. But it's kind of cool when it doesn't take, too, because you get kind of an antique kind of look to it. So don't always worry about it being perfect. Sometimes that vintage look is nice. 
So I got that panel all covered in my embossing powder. And once again, I'm going to heat set it. And when you're done, you're going to get a beautiful glossy gold finish to this panel. And I love the Hero Arts. When you put it on, it looks so matte. And then you do it, and it just comes out with this beautiful shine and this pigment. And you're like, wow. That's one thing I got to say about their metallic embossing powders. They are awesome. Their pewter is awesome. Their copper. Their silver. I have a majority of their metallics, and I love them. Because look at that gloss and that shine. And you get a very nice coat, even with the detailed ones. So for this panel, I'm going to go in shades of the blue. So I'm going to use Faded Jeans, Cracked Pistachio, and I believe it's going to be Broken China, though it's off screen a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with the white one, except I am going to come in with colors that will pop with the gold, which I love gold with tones of blue and green. It's just so regal and pretty. And it will do the same thing it did with the clear. You'll get a slight coat of it on there, but once you rub it down with the soft cloth, the gold will pop right through again, and you will have that. So like I said, it doesn't have to be clear. It can be any color glossy embossing powder. It can be black. It could be brown. It could be white. It can be clear. It could be purple. <laughs> you know, depending what your background's going to be, and as long as it's glossy, and has some sort of slick surface to wipe off the ink, it will resist it. And it will look beautiful no matter what color you use. So if you do not have clear, though most people usually have clear in their possession, or white, you can make do with what you got. So there we go, we got our colors blended. And I'm just gonna go across with my dry cloth again. And I'm just gonna wipe it down. And you're going to see that shine come through. Isn't that pretty? Now, to show that you can do this with white also, I am taking a piece of watercolor paper. I think I try to get sticks right here. There we go. And I'm going to anti-static it quickly. And we are going to, once again, use the same image. But we're going to put this on watercolor paper because I'm going to use my Tombow markers to show that even coloring directly on it and you could do that with alcohol ink too majority of times it will resist though sometimes I find if you don't wipe it off right away it won't resist it will actually color it so depending on what you're using for a product I of course would re recommend more of a dye based ink or water based ink because it does resist it pretty well. If you do it fast enough, it sometimes it will not coat that. Or if you do it with black, the colors will not seep into the black. So we're gonna heat set that quickly. Now I'm gonna pull out my bright Tombow markers here and I'm gonna pull out some pretty purples and pinks and we're gonna add color on there. Now you can color on your mat and do a watercolor technique, or you can even color directly on it, like I'm gonna show you now. And you see how it is resisting the ink from that marker. Isn't that fantastic? Now you can do a water technique after you color it too, just using a water pen or a brush and some water, and you can blend these colors better, and that is what I'm gonna do. Or if you want more of a softer look and less vibrant, you could do it on your mat like I just showed you. Color on your mat and then add water and then brush it on. And you would get the same kind of beautiful look, but you would have more of a softer tone. So I'm coming in here and as you see, it is just resisting it. And you have this beautiful, vibrant color. Look at that. It's sort of an ombre look. So I'm going to get my cup of water ready, and then I'm going to get my broad brush. Oops, sorry, my thing's moving on me. Don't move. 
and I'm going to try with my fine brush, but I don't think my fine brush is working very well. I'm going to get a broader brush and I'm going to come in here and I am going to go over this and it'll go a lot faster. There we go. And you can already see even adding the water that the ink is just pooling right off that area where it is embossed. And I did use white embossing powder for this only because I knew that the watercolor paper actually has more of a cream base. It's very hard to find a solid white watercolor paper. They usually always have sort of a raggy kind of cream color. So to get a more crisp look, you're going to want to use white embossing powder just so you get that crisp whiteness. I'm going to dab it down a little bit. And you can heat set this if you want to quickly dry it. I would recommend going from underneath and then letting it cool. Do not touch it until you have completely let it cool. Because if it gets hot, that reactivates the embossing powder and it then will be sticky. And thus again, you can stick your finger in it and mess it all up. So definitely let it cool before you do any more work on it. And I think I got all a little color off there. But you see how beautiful and vibrant that is? Of course, that's directly on. Now, you could do that also with any of these inks being distressed. You do the memento inks. You can do any ink. And it's really fun. And you can do it directly on. Or you can blend it in. Or you can color it on. So now, let's build some cards. And I am using my new magnetic mat from Ranger. Wendy Beachy station and I am going to use that to position my cards so if my mat moves around it's because it's on top of my glass mat and the one complaint I think I have about that would be of course the fact that it didn't have little rubber feet I think I might go buy some little rubber feet and stick it on the bottom of it and it will help it from slipping so much but one little complaint I have about it other than that it's a fantastic tool especially when you're using glue and you need to hold down your things to dry. It gives you magnets so you can hold it down with the magnets and then you don't have to worry about it slipping or popping up in areas. So I'm also gonna take a strip of vellum and this is a two inch strip of vellum and I am going to put it across my card. So I'm gonna line this up on my grid. I'm going to Add some adhesive and we're going to just stick that on there and then I'm going to line up my happy birthday on the vellum. So let me get my two-way glue and I got it started up for me again. Last time I made a video I had an issue with my two-way glue. It wouldn't come out. So I had to let it sit in some warm water and it opened it right up. So a trick, if your glue tip ever dries on these ballpoint ones, just sitting it in some hot water, it'll loosen it up. All right, and there's the birthday. We're gonna line it up as straight as we can. And um, I can stick my magnets on there. And the one thing I gotta say about these magnets is they're super soft. And they're not going to pinch your fingers as you're putting them on because they have that stainless steel encasing, which makes it really nice. There's no finger pinching like you have with the Magnus or with the Misty or the Tim Holtz. It's very soft. They got felt, actually more foam bottoms than felt. And they're very soft, but yet they work fantastic for holding elements down while they're gluing. Though I do wish I had a couple more magnets. Maybe sooner or later they'll add some more magnets so you can add to it. So, I'm just going to switch this around in different ways just to let those spots that didn't get hit dry a little bit faster. But usually it doesn't take too long for it to sit. So now I'm going to put this on a white cardstock card form. Pop that on there. And we're going to embellish this with my 4 millimeter. Aurora Borealis rhinestones. And I can even use this to hold down for I just glued while I do some embellishing. I'm 
Let me get those out and then we can embellish this. So I'm gonna, since I happened to lose the little dot from this happy birthday, and by the way, this happy birthday is a Spellbinders die. I'll put a link down below for the kit that it's from. I'm gonna put one of my rhinestones as a dot because the little mini dot they give you, it's so easy to lose. And I, I happened after I die cut it to put it down and lose it. So not to fret, that's when rhinestones are your best friend. And there we go. And this is a very simple, easy card for a birthday card. Look at that. Isn't that fun? All right, now for the first panel we made. And for that one, I also cut another Spellbinders sentiment. And I believe it's from the same cat. I, like I said, list all the die kits down below. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And this time, I'm going to take a little one inch strength of vellum. Get my little tape off the back here too. And here's a fun way to straighten, make sure your vellum goes straight. You can line your card in your grid and leave where you want it. And I want it right about there. So what I'm gonna do is just slide it behind and I have it lined up on my ruler so I know it's straight and now I can just push it across. Boom, I know it's straight now. I'm really loving this tool, this magnetic mat. Because of that, oops, and here I am moving around. Like I said, little rubber feet would have been awesome. But I think I can find some at one of the stores and I can hold it in place. And this is also going on a white, white cardstock card form. Oops, let me go the right way. And I'm going to push that down. Now I'm going to add our So Sweet. Oops, I feel like I'm not scored all the way. There we go. And I'm going to center my card. Sorry that we're sliding all over the screen here. Like I said, that's my one complaint is it's a little slippery if you put it alone on a slick surface. I can see why they added the screws so you can screw it down into your workspace if you wanted to, if you could. But let's say if you have a smooth desktop or anything, it will move around. But I think a quick fix to that is even going to your hardware store and just getting some little rubber feet. And then it won't slide as much. So this is in white glitter. The other one was in a magenta glitter paper. I did this in a white glitter paper for the So Sweet. And I'm letting the words kind of hold down the vellum in this one. The other one I had it floating on the vellum. This one I'm going to use the words gluing down in that corner to hold down our vellum strip. So we're just going to put that down like that. Let that dry. And like I said, they got these foam kind of bottoms on it. It's really a nice magnet. And it's easy to reposition and move around. And there's none of that fear of being pinched as you put them down. Now I'm going to use some of my champagne transparent rhinestones on this card. Because I feel like it goes very, very nicely with background colors there. So we're going to add three little rhinestones there. And what's nice is they're transparent, so they don't have the foil behind them, so they show everything that's behind it. So in this case, it's going to pull out the vellum color, so it's going to make them really soft and almost a little matte. Because the background behind them is a little matte. Isn't that pretty? Let me do one more there. All right, and there's card number two. Isn't that pretty? Now for that beautiful gold one we made. And for that, I have a Simply Hello die from Altenew. And I did that in a copper glitter. And I'm going to stick this beautiful panel on a craft card form. And we're going to put some glue. One thing I often do is I get mixed up between my glue and my 
stick it tool, I they both got blue channels, so when I grab them from, I often get them mixed up. And there we go. We're gonna go around here, touch up that. And move that down a tad bit because it's a little taller than that. I'm gonna stick the hello on there with some glue and we're gonna hold it down with the magnets while it dries. Oops, we stuck on top of each other, but see, it's very easy to pull them apart. Alright, so this one I'm gonna use my five millimeter gold glitter flat sequence. Even though my word isn't gold, it's still in that same gold tone. So we'll let that dry for a little bit and it should be almost ready. While we're waiting for that, I'll get my my sequence out. And we're gonna put some glue on that. And we're just gonna attach these on here. Let me get my little wand. And there is card number three. All right, and for the last card, we're gonna use our second panel we made with the brown overcoating with the embossed color underneath. We're gonna also put that on a craft card form, and I am going to put it directly on. I even put an extra adhesive where I had that problem, where I got a little wrinkle in it. And now I'm going to take another Simply Die from Altenew in the word thank you, and I'm gonna do that in a brown chocolate glitter. And I've also noticed that I missed a couple spots. So I'm gonna to have to go back through with my tool. This is a tool in one, all in one tool from Spellbinders. It is awesome for getting those little fine details. So I'm gonna put this card underneath this and line up my thank you. So I'm gonna to try to center this. This tool is also very good for centering in your cards because you have that center lined to use for your layout, which really is helpful if you're often concerned that you're not straight. Or if you're wondering if your image or thing is in the center of the card. So it is a really helpful tool for that. And I am very thankful for that because usually I have to guess it. I do find that very helpful. So I'm gonna grab my magnet magnets. And like I said, I sometimes wish there was a couple more magnets, but I'm gonna use my ruler for now. I'm just gonna lay that on top of that and use my ruler as another magnet to hold it down. All right, so I'm gonna use also these beautiful little copper flowers I have. And we're gonna add some little flowers to this front. I thought they were a nice contrast to the words, the word thank you, because they have that same kind of iridescent look, but they are also very, that same colored brown. So I'm gonna add three more, of these little flowers on the bottom. And there you go. Look at that, this beautiful thank you card. So great way to use heat embossing to make beautiful panels for your cards. And we showed that you could do it in multiple ways, multiple colors, and get beautiful results either way. So depending on whatever medium you have or embossing powder, you can make it work. So if you like this video, please check out the last uploaded video, as well as one specially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to like, ring, and subscribe, as well as check out our website, as well as our Instagram and Facebook pages.